heading into week two of Iditarod over the weekend, something we can all relate to as we start off this Monday. How you feeling? Uh, pretty good. I'm trying, trying to figure out daylight savings time right now. <laughs> Well, here's a hoping you all set your clocks ahead one hour. That was Richie Deal checking in, saying he was feeling pretty good and things were going well. He made his way through Shack Tulik Sunday and checked out of Koyak early this morning. Now, there's a number of awards that are given out throughout the Iditarod, and last year Dan Caduce won the always sought after Leonard Seppala Humanitarian Award. He won it for his exceptional dog care. After crossing under the Broad Arch in Nome with all 14 of the dogs he started with, and now that dog care is coming to the forefront for the musher who is realizing his spot in the race. Our main problem this year was the super warm temperatures and a little bit of rough trail we had at the beginning of the race. I had these guys kind of souped up a little too hot and so they came out of the gate too hard and it took its toll. Now we're kind of on autopilot and I'm just let the front of the race go and we're just going to take our time and cruise into Nome. And with the time change, a chance to get more daylight and, of course, see beautiful sunsets like this. Check it out. Absolutely gorgeous. This is video of Ryan Reddington and Pete Kaiser coming across the sea ice last night. Absolutely gorgeous there. Now, these two mushers closed in on their third checkpoint of this weekend, but they are veteran mushers and they've run this trail before. But there are two rookies that are in the front of the pack vying for another top spot. Sports director Jordan Rodenberger has that story from Unilaclete. Well, after more than 700 miles along the Iditarod Trail, it can be pretty easy to get caught up in the Unilaclete checkpoint with all of this great food and the warm beds with some teams in the front of the pack taking measures to just blow through this checkpoint altogether. Ryan Reddington arriving into Unilaclete at 4.20 a.m. Sunday morning, the first time he has been in the lead at the first checkpoint along the western Alaska coast, staying for more than three hours before taking off to maintain his lead. Unilaclete's in my blood and, and I'm very proud to be here and, and um, thank you guys very much. Yep. For now! Meanwhile, Pete Kaiser and Richie Deal camp for several hours about 20 miles outside of Unilaclete. Part of their strategy is to just blow through the checkpoint. Following the top three came two battling for Rookie of the Year, Hunter Keefe and Eddie Burke Jr., who arrived 22 minutes apart and left three minutes apart. But if Hunter Keefe doesn't win Rookie of the Year, he certainly has a case for a sportsmanship award. As on the run from Grayling to Eagle Island, Burke dozed off, fell off the sled, and lost his team of 10 dogs who ran about 15 miles by themselves to the next checkpoint. When I got back to the checkpoint, they were all scared. It looked like I abandoned them. They were all sour attitudes. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't leave you guys, not on purpose. <laughs> Burke, with few options, began making the walk to Eagle Island until he came across another musher. Um, I thought I was catching a team because I saw a headlight, and then I realized that, oh, it was a person walking, and there's the ITI walkers and stuff, so I figured it must have been one of them, and then he kind of stopped really close to the trail, and I was like, oh, that's Eddie. Keith didn't hesitate to give Burke a ride, which would only hurt his race time. I did, didn't really think twice I let him on because... I, would, I wouldn't want to be walking at 20 below. But Keith knows what his team is capable of. It really uh, showed how incredible my team was because um, he hopped on the sled, so we doubled the load. And you can ask him, not one dog ever looked back for even half a second wondering what was going on. They just um, chugged along like the little freight trains they were. That was big time. It's being a true sportsman. And so what did the rookie learn after losing his team? Well, I rigged out myself a little... Uh, I got this right here and it snaps to another line on my sled, so if I do fall off, I ain't going too far. And now the rookie tandem, who can't seem to separate from each other, are now braving one of the toughest stretches along the Iditarod Trail. And for those that are out of the Unilaclete checkpoint, they are on to the western Alaska coast where absolutely anything can happen. Some of the most wild stories from the trail taking place down that stretch. So be sure to keep tuning in to Alaska's news source for the latest along the Iditarod Trail. But for now, we're going to be sending it back to the studio.
And let's check in with the latest Iditarod GPS tracker to see where the mushers are on the trail. Looks like Reddington, of course, right here out front. Kaiser is right behind him. Reddington tracking at about a 7.6 racing speed and Kaiser as at 8.2. Of course, Richie Deal making his way to Elam. Burke resting in Koyuk and you can see the other mushers making their way. But the big thing is here right after Elam, you have White Mountain. And then we have safety and then the finish is in Nome. Now keep in mind the mushers do have to take their eight hour rest in White Mountain. But after that, it can be anyone's game. So things should be shaping up here within the next day or so. Of course, you can keep track of the latest I did a rod news by checking out our live blog on alaskasnewsource.com. I'm Ariane Arambiro with your I did a rod update.